Hello, Wall Springs. Welcome back to another edition of the Monday Sports Recap on Inside Scoop and 90. I'm Tony Salazar here to give you the inside scoop on what happened in the NFL this weekend. First up, Cleveland Browns defeated the Houston Texans 27-14 in Deshaun Watson's first start since the end of the 2020 season. Watson's first start for the Browns came late in the season due to his 11-game suspension. Along with playing a familiar team, Watson also had a few people familiar with him in attendance. Ten of Watson's accusers of sexual harassment attended the game with their lawyer, Tony Busby, in an effort to, quote, not go away silently. Despite the win, Watson had a below-average game, throwing for 131 yards and an interception. Next up, the Baltimore Ravens defeated the Denver Broncos 10-9 thanks to a game-winning drive from backup quarterback Tyler Huntley. Huntley filled in for Lamar Jackson, who left the game during the first quarter due to a knee injury. Huntley and the offense struggled throughout the game until Huntley rallied the troops on a 91-yard touchdown drive capped off with a two-yard rushing touchdown from Tyler Huntley with 28 seconds left. Moving to the other team, Denver's offense continues to struggle under first-year head coach Nathaniel Hackett and quarterback Russell Wilson. During four full quarters of football, the Denver Broncos were so pathetic on offense that they had zero trips to the red zone. Lastly, Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals defeated Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs 27-24. Burrow is now tied with Tom Brady for the most wins over Mahomes with three. The Bengals' defense came up big in the fourth quarter, shutting out the Chiefs and forcing a Travis Kelsey fumble. The Chiefs sit at 9-3, and, and the Bengals are now at 8-4, and four, as both teams battle out for the number one seed in the AFC. Well, Ospreys, that's it for this edition of the Monday Sports Recap on Inside Scoop of 90. I'm Tony Salazar, and we'll see you next time. Hello, Ospreys. Welcome to another edition of the Monday Sports Recap on Inside Scoop of 90. I'm Tony Salazar, here to give you the inside scoop on what happened in the NFL this weekend. First up, the Mike White-led New York Jets defeated the Chicago Bears 31-10. White filled in for the 2021 second overall pick, Zach Wilson, after head coach Robert Sala benched him earlier this week for poor play. White took a hold of that opportunity and threw for 315 yards and three touchdowns. The Bears' offense, on the other hand, struggled under quarterback Trevor Simeon, who filled in for Justin Fields after Fields was ruled out due to a soul injury he sustained in last week's game. Next up, Sam Darnold and the Carolina Panthers rode over the Denver Broncos 23-10. Sunday's game was Darnold's first start since he lost the job to Baker Mayfield during training camp. Darnold had 164 yards passing, two total touchdowns, and zero turnovers to keep the 4-8 Panthers a game and a half behind of the NFC South lead. Going to the Broncos, the Denver's offense continues to struggle as they average a league low 14.3 points per game. Their points per game is the worst in the NFL since the 2000 Cleveland Browns. The Broncos' defense, which had played a elite level this season, showed frustration towards the offense on Sunday. Defensive lineman Mike Purcell got in the face of Russell Wilson on the sideline. Lastly, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers continue to struggle as they fall to 5-6 after they lost to the Cleveland Browns in overtime 23-17. Nick Chubb scored a three-yard rushing touchdown with 19 seconds left in overtime and Jacoby Brissett's final start before Deshaun Watson returned from the 11-game suspension. Tom Brady spoke to the media after the game and said the Bucks' offense is, quote, not scoring enough points and is not on the same page. Well, Ospreys, that's it for this edition of the Monday Sports Recap on Inside Scoop and 90. I'm Tony Salazar and I will see you next time. Let's go to Tony for his thoughts on the loss. Tony? The Jacksonville Jaguars suffer another disappointing loss, this time to the New York Giants, 23-17. Now, despite the disappointing loss, running back Travis Etienne looks like he'll be a future star in the league. Doug Peterson spoke to the media after the game to discuss about Travis's new successes. Well, played tough, physical. Um, you know, obviously can't, can't do that. He knows that. You know, it's something we work on each week and, you know, practice uh, Thursday. We do a ball security drill. You know, we just got to keep hanging together and, and keep working and, and – um, you know, just like I told the guys after the game, I mean, we, we do that, stick together, you know, good things are going to happen, you know, for them, and, and uh, we'll get it flipped around. While losing a fourth game in, in a row, it's easy to point the finger at one specific player. However, Trevor Lawrence believes the Jacksonville Jaguars are still a good team that they'll rally behind each other for future successes. You know, we, it's, it's our job to make those plays, and we got the guys. We got the guys to do it. <clears throat> and, you know, we haven't, we haven't made them up until this point in, in a few of these games, and, um, you just got to move on to the next one and, and go get the next one and, and just get some of this momentum back because we really believe we're a great team and when we put it all together we are. So, The Jags hope to end their four game losing streak against the Denver Broncos next week in Mile High. Back to you in the studio. Thanks Austin. Coming off the bye, the Jacksonville Jaguars got a significant win over the Baltimore Ravens 28-27. Going into the last seconds of the fourth quarter, Doug Peterson decided to go for two instead of kicks the extra point to take the game into overtime. Doug Peterson spoke to the media after the game about why he decided to go for two. What do we got to lose? I mean, you know, and, and it's just, this is something I, I told the staff during, the, during that last, I don't know, five or six minutes of the game. It's like, you know, we got to think players, not plays, you know, and, 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 and trust our guys. And, you know, and, and, and that's what this game, our, our guys believe. They believe once we scored that touchdown at the end that, 
you know, they wanted to go for two. It wasn't my decision. The players were like, let's go. Doug Peterson also gave a significant amount of the credit towards the defense. The defense held the high-flying Ravens offense to only four field goals when they could have capitalized those drives on touchdowns. I thought our defense really stepped up in the red zone today. Um, did a nice job there holding them to kicks. You know, uh, obviously, you know, they're a team that can, is electric running the football. You know, Lamar's a, a, a tremendous guy. Really, really just holding them to those, those, those field goals, I think, is could have been a different football game. You know, if it's uh, if they score on one or two of those, you know, possessions could be different, but defense did a nice job down there. Moving forward, the 4-7 and seven Jaguars look to create a win streak as they are set to face the Detroit Lions next week in the Motor City. Back to you, Austin. Hello, Ospreys. Welcome back to another edition of the Monday Sports Recap on Inside Scoop and 90. I'm Tony Salazar here to give you the inside scoop on what happened in the NFL this weekend. First up, Cleveland Browns defeated the Houston Texans 27-14 in Deshaun Watson's first start since the end of the 2020 season. Watson's first start for the Browns came late in the season due to his 11-game suspension. Along with playing a familiar team, Watson also had a few people familiar with him in attendance. Ten of Watson's accusers of sexual harassment attended the game with their lawyer, Tony Busby, in an effort to, quote, not go away silently. Despite the win, Watson had a below-average game, throwing for 131 yards and an interception. Next up, the Baltimore Ravens defeated the Denver Broncos 10-9 thanks to a game-winning drive from backup quarterback Tyler Huntley. Huntley filled in for Lamar Jackson, who left the game during the first quarter due to a knee injury. Huntley and the offense struggled throughout the game until Huntley rallied the troops on a 91-yard touchdown drive capped off with a two-yard rushing touchdown from Tyler Huntley with 28 seconds left. Moving to the other team, Denver's offense continues to struggle under first-year head coach Nathaniel Hackett and quarterback Russell Wilson. During four full quarters of football, the Denver Broncos were so pathetic on offense that they had zero trips to the red zone. Lastly, Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals defeated Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs 27-24. Burrow is now tied with Tom Brady for the most wins over Mahomes with three. The Bengals' defense came up big in the fourth quarter, shutting out the Chiefs and forcing a Travis Kelsey fumble. The Chiefs sit at 9-3, and, and the Bengals are now at 8-4, and four as both teams battle out for the number one seed in the AFC. Well, Ospreys, that's it for this edition of the Monday Sports Recap on Inside Scoop of 90. I'm Tony Salazar, and we'll see you next time.